and welcome back. My name is Dan McPerny and this is your ACT prep. Today we're going to be covering roots and exponents, but we're only going to do it at a very basic level. We'll continue this conversation more when we get to the more in-depth algebra conversations later on in this course. But for right now, we're just going to scratch the surface. Remember, if you want to keep raising that ACT score, then you need to go ahead and click the subscribe button. That way you get weekly updates with new videos every week to help you increase your score. With that said, I hope we can learn something new today. And thanks for joining me for your math ACT prep. So we are still in the pre-algebra section of the ACT. Remember, if you want to see all of the sections, you can check out my other video that covers all the different topics, which I'll link at the top. Um, but for today, we are jumping into the second bullet point, which is positive integer powers and square roots. Now, again, we're going to be covering the basics of this because you'll see these topics pop up again and again in the other algebra sections. Looking at example problems for this can be a little bit tricky since a lot of them aren't covering just the basics of these concepts, but are looking at much further down the road. So when you look at the one, for example, in the top right here, that is strictly an algebra exponent rule question. So we're not gonna cover things like that today, but what we do cover today will help you with the other two types of questions. So let's break down the topics for today. We're gonna to be looking at square roots and exponents. We're gonna be actually just defining them straight up. We're gonna look at some special rules when the exponent is zero, the exponent is a fraction, or if you got a negative exponent. Then we're gonna dive right into scientific notation, which will wrap us up for the day. Then we can go ahead and look at a few example problems and see if we've learned anything new. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into the first one. What is a square root. A square root of a number is when you are trying to find another number that when multiplied itself will give you the original number that you're taking the square root of. Now I know I'm using the word number a lot so I've tried to color code it on here so we know which one we're talking about but here's also an example to help us through. If I'm taking the square root of 25 I want to find a number that when multiplied it by itself will give you 25. In this case that number is Five, because five times five gives us 25. Now, you can get into the trickiness of, well, technically it could be negative five as well, because negative five times negative five is also 25. But for the conversation today, we're just gonna be looking at it in terms of being positive, all right? So when we go through, there's a specific symbol we use for square root. As you can see over here on the left-hand side, if we have this symbol right there, it means you're taking the square root of the number underneath that. So it means the square root of 25 will give us five. Now, 25 is actually known as a perfect square or one of the perfect squares. A perfect square is just a number that when you take the square root, it gives you a nice little integer for an answer. So because five times five gives us 25, that makes 25 a perfect square. Other low perfect squares would be like four or nine or 36, because when you take the square root of them, it gives you a nice integer answer. Moving right along, we can actually see that square roots are not the only types of roots out there. Now, I know when you see a symbol like this, it means square root, but sometimes there's actually another number right here. So say, for example, if you have a little three right here, that actually means that you're gonna take a cube root of the number underneath it, all right? So in this case, what is the cube root of eight and what does that mean? It means what number multiplied by itself times now, I don't mean like two times three. I mean like two times two times two. All right, now two times two gives us four times another two would give us eight. So the cube root of eight is actually just two because that's the number that when multiplied by itself three times gives you eight. Now, this can be actually any number. You could change that to be a, I don't know, 20 root. All right, now that would be crazy, but that would mean what number times itself 20 times would give you the number underneath. So square root's not the only one we deal with. There's actually all types of roots. Square root's just your most popular. After that, we do see occasionally cube roots, but beyond that, they're pretty rare unless it's a question specifically around the idea of roots. The next major topic we're going to define is exponents. Now, what is an exponent? Sometimes you'll see a tiny little number above a larger number. That tiny little number is called an exponent. And that number usually tells you how many times they want you to multiply the base number by itself. 
All right. So if you look here, I got a little example of this. You can see here the four with the little three. The three is your exponent. The four is what we call your base. All right. So because we have the three as an exponent, that means that we're going to take the base and multiply it by itself three times. So four times four times four gives us 64. So that means four to the third power is just 64. We could move on from here to just do a bunch of root problems and exponent problems over and over, but I'm not going to do that because in reality, all of these questions should be handled on your calculator. So if you don't know how to plug this into your calculator, a root or an exponent, then you need to learn how. You can check the video that I got linked above right now, and it's going to walk you through how to do both roots and exponents on a TI Inspire or a TI-84. So if you want to see that, go ahead and click on that video, but I'm not going to cover that here because it'll take quite a bit of time for something that really is just a calculator problem. At this point, we're going to move on to some funky rules that come from exponents. Starting off, exponent of zero. Whenever a number is raised to the exponent of zero, like for example, 234 to the zeroth power, the answer is always just one. So if I do 234 to the zeroth power, one. If I do five to the zeroth power, one. If I do any really cool number to the zeroth power, the answer is one. That's just a rule of exponent. It fulfills a whole bunch of proofs that go along with it, but that's not really something we got to dive into. What you need to know is that if you see an exponent of zero, the answer is going to be one. The second special exponent rule we're going to look at is when you have a fraction as the exponent. Now that may look a little scary because a lot of you guys hate fractions, but it's really not too bad. All it does is switches the exponent problem into a root problem. You guys know that we talked earlier that this symbol means the square root. We said if there's a different number out front, then it may mean the third root or the fourth root. But when we don't see a number, the default is kind of just a two, the square root, all right? When we're looking down here at 25 to the 1 half, what happens on that is that the number on the bottom of the fraction in an exponent becomes the number in front of your root sign. The number on the top of the fraction becomes the exponent of the number underneath the root. So in this case, we would just have 25 to the first power. Now, we don't ever write the 1 because anything to the 1 power is just itself. And we don't usually write the 2 because the square root sign defaults as a 2. But if I'm looking down here at 25 to the 3 fourths power, in that case, I probably would want to write down what I got here of the fourth root, because that's the number on the bottom, of 25 raised to the third power, because that's the number on the top. So when you see a fraction as an exponent, you can always rewrite it like this. There are some ACT questions where they'll have you rewrite things or see what's equivalent. That's where this would fall in. The last rule we're going to look at is negative exponents. If you have a negative exponent, like what we see here, 8 to the negative 3, that just means that you take that whole expression and move it to the bottom of a fraction with 1 on top. So when we see 8 to the negative third power, that really means 1 over 8 to the third power. Now, in the calculator, I can put in 8 to the third power, and that gives me 512. So that means that this expression is actually equivalent to 1 over 512. Okay, so that's a, another one of our little weird rules that deal with exponents. The last topic we're covering today is scientific notation. Scientific notation is just a special way of writing numbers. It essentially gets rid of a bunch of unneeded zeros in the front or at the end of a number. So if I'm looking at a really large number or a really small number, I take the largest place value of that number. So for our first example here, the 323,000, the three is the largest place value number. And it moves that three into the ones place and then puts the rest of the numbers after the decimal place. And by doing that, you can drop off any extra zeros. Now, how do we just move decimal places around? You can multiply by 10 raised to an exponent. So here you see that I rewrote this as 3.23 times 10 to the fifth power. Why? What happens when you multiply by 10 to a power? Well, essentially, if you're multiplying by a positive integer, you are just moving that decimal to the right that many times. So for this number, I would be moving the decimal five times to the right. So one, two, and then I would have three, four, five more times, which essentially would add three zeros in those places, which gives us our original answer of 323,000 total. Now, when you have a negative number, it just does the opposite. It moves that decimal to the left 
that many times. So in this case, I have to the negative six, because if I'm looking at the 2.34, I would move it over one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're back to the original number. So again, the five is moving, or a positive integer being at the 10, is moving us to the right, whereas a negative one moves the decimal to the left. By working in reverse, you can see how we get rid of a lot of these zeros and have a much smaller number. When you're dealing with a lot of scientific calculations, sometimes numbers are extremely large or extremely small when you're dealing with either physics or maybe you're looking at something in space. So they don't want to write all of those zeros every time they deal with it. And instead, they resort to using scientific notation. Now, before we look at this final example problem, I want to ask you guys, which of the exponent rules do you think is the craziest? The fact that an exponent of zero always gives you an answer of one, the fact that a fraction actually turns it into a root problem, or the fact that a negative exponent makes it one over that original expression. Tell me in the comments below which one you think is the craziest. Now, to finish our time out, we're going to look at this example problem. Now, a lot of times the ACT does not ask these type of questions straight forward. Instead, it gives you a question where you need to know that you're applying one of the concepts we looked at today. This one says, which of the following numbers multiplied by itself four times equals 2,401? Now, I would use this in the calculator as to get my answer, but I don't even know what to put in the calculator because it doesn't really give us a clear cut question. Now, when it says multiplied by itself four times to give us that, that means we're looking for a much smaller number than this 2,000. And you can see that in the question that we have here. But how do I go about finding that smaller number? Well, we're not taking this raised to the fourth power because that would give us a huge number. Instead, we need to find what number multiplied by itself would give us this. So that means we are looking at a root problem. And in particular, we're looking at a fourth root problem. So what is the fourth root of 2,401? Well, I would just plug that in the calculator and it would pop out the answer of seven. So that's your final answer for this ACT question. There is no reason to get easy questions like this wrong on the ACT. So I know a lot of this stuff has been basic material, but sometimes you need to know the basics to get all the points needed to do well on the ACT. Well, boom. That's a wrap for today, guys. Thanks for joining me for this math ACT prep. I hope we can keep working together to raise your ACT score. Remember, go ahead and click the like button below if you liked anything you saw here today. It helps me out and it costs you absolutely nothing. So I hope to see you guys again soon. And remember, if you're still having issues with the calculator, make sure to check out that calculator video that I linked before. Have a great day, guys, and I hope to see you again soon.